Hi everyone. We often talk about using a dependent or an independent variable in our research studies, but we have to ask ourselves, do we really understand what they mean? And how do they get affected by some other factors or some other variables that we often classify as extraneous variables? In today's video, I will take an example of a causal relationship research and using examples, I'll show you what can be an independent variable and dependent variable and how can we have extraneous variables and how can we address this. So let's get started. So in today's example, we have the causal relationship between smoking and cancer. What we are trying to show here is smoking can cause cancer. So in this example, what is smoking? Smoking is independent variable where we assume it to be the cause of causing cancer. So this is the causal relationship. Why did I use the word assumed cause? Is because we have not yet proved the relationship or we have not yet proved that smoking does lead to cancer. Independent variable, the definition of it on its own is that any variation in it is not caused due to other variables. I will explain what does that mean very soon, as soon as I explain what is dependent variable. So what is cancer here? Cancer here becomes a dependent variable as the assumed effect of smoking. Again, why did I use the word assumed? Is because you have not yet proved that cancer is caused by smoking. What is dependent variable? Dependent variable is a variable, the variation of which can change due to its effect by other variables. When I say other variables, it could be independent variable, it could be other variables such as extraneous variable that I will talk about. And then in my next video, I will talk about one more type of variable which is called the intervening variable. Let's not get into it right now. Let's understand what does independent variable and dependent variable mean in a causal relationship and how do extraneous variables play a role in it. So here we say that smoking is assumed to be causing cancer. That is the causal relationship we are investigating. Independent variable, remember the definition I said, the variation in independent variable does not or is not caused by any other variable. What does that mean is that like in case of cancer, which is a dependent variable, we can say that the rate of cancer or cancer is caused because of smoking. But smoking is not caused due to or rate of smoking can go up and down and it is not because of any other variable affecting it. In this case, we are talking about in this case only. So in this case, what we say is that smoking is what is affecting the cancer, but cancer is not affecting smoking. All right. So smoking is happening on its own. The variation of in smoking can go up and down and that is not because of cancer. So here we have two very simple variables, but in research, when you are trying to prove a causal relationship or even a correlationship, when you are trying to show that independent variable is causing some changes in the dependent variable or independent variable is the cause of any changes in the dependent variable, then you have to prove the relationship by also addressing the extraneous variables. So what is extraneous variables? Let's understand. So extraneous variables would be those factors which may affect the changes in dependent variable, but you have not classified them as independent variable. So what does this mean? Is that you are saying that smoking may be the assumed cause of cancer. But is smoking the only cause of cancer? So when you are studying a group of participants or a group of uh, a population, uh, you take a population or a sample size uh, or participants who have agreed to become part of your research studies, in, in those participants, you have to show that smoking has caused the cancer, not anything else. And I will tell you what anything else means. So only when you can address those other variables which may have caused cancer and show that they were not contributing to cancer, only then you can prove or establish that it was smoking that caused the cancer and not the other variables. There is no problem if the extraneous variables play a role in causing cancer. Don't be misguided. Even though you may be investigating the relationship between smoking and cancer, research also allows you to 
not only address all the extraneous variables but also allow them to be part of the independent variable. So you can say that yes, there are some extraneous variables which I thought were extraneous, but actually they are independent variables. They were also causing uh, the cancer in this case. So it depends on what is the focus of your study and how you allow for this. So let's start taking examples of extraneous variables. Let the first variable be age. So is age uh, have anything to do with cancer? I think it does because when you start to show that smoking is the cause of cancer, then smoking cannot be the cause of cancer in infants, in most, in most populations. Let's say in most populations because infants or young children, they are not smoking. So if they have cancer, that doesn't mean that smoking has caused that cancer. So you, you cannot say that smoking is the only cause of cancer. Smoking is one of the causes. But in your study population, what you have to show is that if you have in that study population, if you have children uh, with cancer, if you have young adults with cancer, uh, then and they have cancer and they have not been smoking, then you cannot say that smoking is the cause of cancer. You cannot say smoking is the only cause of cancer. That's what I mean. All right. What can be the second variable is the time for which one has been smoking. So if one has been smoking for 10 years and got cancer, and one has been smoking for only one year and still got cancer. Was it because of smoking? Or was it because of some other reason? Or how does time play a role in causing cancer? So can one person smoke for only one year and get cancer? Or does one person have to smoke for 10 years and then get cancer? How do you address for that period for which someone has been smoking? So that is also something that you have to address. Then you have to address another variable, the extent of smoking. What does extent of smoking means? That means if I have cancer and I have I only smoke one cigarette a day, and then there's another participant who has cancer, but he has been smoking or she has been smoking 40, 100, 200 cigarettes a day. Then how do you establish for that relationship? How do you how can you say that smoking causes cancer in that? Or let's take it the other way around. In all these extraneous variables, let's take it the other way around. Let's say I have been smoking only one cigarette a day and have got cancer. Whereas somebody has been smoking 100 cigarettes a day and not got cancer. Then how do you establish the relationship between smoking and cancer? Is it caused by uh, the time period? Is it caused by the extent of smoking? That is how many cigarettes we smoke. Is it caused by age? So how do you establish or how do you address these extraneous variables? Another variable could be exercising. So let's say if somebody has been smoking, uh, two people have been smoking the same number of cigarettes for the same number of years, we are the same age, but one person has been exercising a lot and has got cancer or has been exercising a lot and has not got cancer. How do you address for that variable? How do you show that it is only smoking that is causing cancer and that exercise prevents it or extent of cigarettes or extent of how long you have been smoking uh, also has a factor or maybe doesn't have or doesn't play a role or the age doesn't play a role. How do you uh, establish that? Finally, the body mass and rest, the, the basic health of a person. So if a person is heavier on the heavier side, uh, they are what we call as the heavier build or they have a lot of weight um, and, and they have generally been unhealthy and somebody has been very fit and, and both of them have been smoking and they are the same age and they, are the, uh, they have been smoking for the same period of time and they have been smoking the same number of cigarettes a day. Does body mass index play a role? Does that prevent uh, cancer from occurring because of smoking? So in this case, you have to show that smoking is the cause of cancer. It is the only cause of cancer in the study population. If it is not the only cause of cancer, then you have to explain to the reviewer or examiner that smoking is one of the causes of cancer but it is also affected by some other variables or extraneous variables such as the general fitness of a person, the body mass index, how, how, how much they exercise, the age, the extent of smoking, the number of cigarettes they smoke. So you may say that yes, smoking causes cancer only if, for example, a person smokes more than 20 cigarettes a day or if a person smokes for more than 10 years or if a person is between the age of 20 to 50 or if a person has never exercised or if a person has a certain body mass index, which is more than say 25 or 35. So how you investigate this relationship becomes a very crucial aspect of your research. So in establishing a causal relationship, 
do not be misguided in thinking that you have to convince to your examiners or your reviewers that independent variable is the cause of dependent variable. No, you have to show that you have addressed all the extraneous variables as well. And if you have found that something else has also been affecting cancer, then you include that extraneous variable as the independent variable and you say that the variation in those independent variable also leads to a variation in cancer. So I hope uh, this video was useful for you. In my next video, I will also include an additional variable called the intervening variable, which is also very important for you to understand. Because in research, these are the things the examiners and reviewers look out for. Have you addressed uh, these crucial aspects of research, uh, which distinguishes your research uh, from bad to good? and gets your paper published in high quality journals or you'll see recognized in your field poster. Thank you for watching today's video. Bye bye.